speaking to whoever's in the audience. So yeah, we're live now and I'm live with Professor Gilbert Strang. Um, and I think that a lot of people in my audience actually are already familiar with your work through the MIT open courseware stuff that you do. But are you, are you still teaching at MIT now? Uh, I am. I, I'm on leave this fall. Uh, and my plan was to be in Oxford, but it didn't happen because of right. COVID. So uh, I've just been inside. But actually, it was quite a productive six months or eight months since the uh, lockdown started. Um, so Massachusetts has been is a more sensible state than some, and uh, we're we're sort of surviving reasonably. Uh, so anyway, with a whole day every day to to uh, do what to write if I wanted to write a, a new book. Uh, right started maybe i've mentioned that in email anyway i feel good about it and uh, yeah and now it's uh, just beginning to make its way out uh, and i'm uh, thinking working about doing other things it's so it's sort of a relaxed life but but still i hope a little productive so you've sort of become um, like a mathematics kind of teaching phenomena for your open courseware um, lectures where you're teaching linear algebra and th this course here. Um, the, uh, right. But then yeah. al also um, I, f I found your calculus lectures um, are really good as well. Like they've really, it's really helped my understanding. But I, wonder, I, wanted, I wondered if you wouldn't mind sort of talking us through the story of how you arrived at... Um, yeah, how you arrived at linear algebra being this thing that you had a kind of passion for that you wanted to teach, and what is there like a story behind that in your career, yeah. your thinking? And, and there's a little story about the uh, doing the the uh, videos themselves. Um, right. Actually, I I recorded them just a little bit before MIT OpenCourseWare began. Uh, there were uh, uh, there were the department is it, it has some really good lectures in it, and I uh, it was sad to think that they that their lectures would not they, they just went out into the air that it would never be seen. Uh, so I thought I'd set an example and, and encourage them, um, my mentors, to to uh, do the same. Uh, anyway. Uh, it was my uh, linear algebra, as you say, is my favorite subject, and I was teaching from an earlier edition of that book that you held up, and uh, it was—it's just my class. But uh, it has become just amazing. I still get really super nice messages from all over the world um, every day, and I reply to them. Uh, I can't always answer all the questions, but sometimes I help people with homework. Maybe, maybe unwise to say that on this yeah. in this uh, time because it may flood in. But I would just have to pull back. But it's 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 really nice. It, it's it's especially this year with the not much outside contact firsthand. It's wonderful to have. Um, friendly messages coming uh, in through email. Yeah, it's, it's really just a great experience. So, so is it only through teaching this course that um, linear algebra became your thing then, almost before then? It was oh, just, uh, no, my, that's my subject. I can remember, so I, I was at MIT as an undergraduate, and then I got a scholarship to Oxford. So that began my long uh, and happy uh, connection with uh, with Oxford, um, so I there I did the usual undergraduate course in math, and uh, I I like linear algebra the best. I I don't I know somehow it fits me. I'm not a geometer. I don't think uh, uh, about shapes much. It's right. uh, uh, linear algebra is just right, and there were a couple of textbooks at the time that just clicked so uh that's what I, I, I and 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 its applications i should say uh, i thought at that time i would take a job in industry 
uh, you know, I could imagine going on for the for the PhD, which I did. But then, e even up to the last minute, I was thinking um, to work for a company like Bell Labs or something. Uh, but then uh, MIT offered me a chance to teach uh, for a couple of years at least, and and uh, I married a, an, a, a Oxford student, an English girl, so she was happy to be closer to England in Boston, and uh, and then it turned out to, we stayed here. Yeah, stayed here and kept doing linear algebra, and and never took a job in in a, in a industry or uh, uh, labs as as I expected. What do you, you never know. It's it's worth also noting. Um, people often talk about your teaching style. It's like um, a sort of conversation with yourself where you're work. You know, like you're working things out. You're um, explaining mm -hmm. these concepts to yourself. Um, is that something that you? Um, just naturally kind of comes to you? Or did I you think, think it, about this? I just started that way. And then it, it seems to me important to not to go super fast, you know, I think to, to go slowly enough and to think about it again and to get the class to be thinking about it. Yeah. So it's, it is something that I do sort of consciously because uh, it's, I, I really care about people uh following what i'm doing there's no no prize for just rattling on and uh, i by the way i haven't so i have because i was on leave i haven't yet taught a class on zoom uh but uh i'll have to do it in the spring and uh have to learn how uh so that's i'm sorry about that because uh the blackboard for me is just yeah. wonderful. Yeah, I, I, you, you can sort of set a pace, a, a human pace that people can keep up with, and the and the steps you've taken stay up on the board for uh, beyond beyond the, after your after that part is over. Uh, so it's it's been it's yeah it's just I enjoy teaching. Yeah. Yeah. You could you could get um, a blackboard in the background right behind the camera that would uh... well I maybe could yeah I don't know if that uh, right right or or uh, some uh, MIT was making iPads available right. uh, for teaching and that maybe that's the way I'm <laughs> yeah now I, you can see I'm I haven't yet thought this through and I'm, I'm thinking to email my friends and saying okay give me some tips about how to how to deal with with teaching by Zoom? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, I, so, oh, sorry, you go. Well, I was going to say I was invited to give a few talks. I hope I'm getting better. Uh, I, I get I need help. I get somebody else to to sh control the slides, and I just talk. But my first effort. Oh dear! When I think back a couple of months, I just. Uh, Talk, kept talking nonstop about the the topic, and in half an hour I was all done. And and I just glanced at my watch and realized I had another half hour to go on this invited talk in Poland, and I had really uh, just a slow way down. So, but I'll find out how to do it. But I hope, yeah. So, so, so to move on to um, talking about some of the maths then. Um, sure. My, so my understanding, um, I, and I hope I'm remembering the history right, um, is that a gentleman called Arthur Cayley um, invented a lot of the notation um, yeah. or some of the notation around matrices, but he just thought it was a useless kind of um, thing that he was kind of interested in. Yeah. And now I, I, I come from a software engineering background, and so obviously... Oh, yeah. Um, a lot of this stuff um, is is at the forefront of you know the the kind of technology that we're using day to day. The um, 
the way maybe people think about economics, the way people think about um, cosmology and modeling the universe. So could, could you describe what um, what is linear algebra? What it, What is it about? Yeah. Why is it so important um, in the model? Okay, world? yeah, but, uh, but the, the, sort of the first thing to say yeah. is that you're absolutely right. Linear algebra has moved into the center. Uh, it's, well, it's a digital world, so, so uh, I have a little, page I think on my website too much calculus uh, in 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 the US uh, calculus just overwhelms the the undergraduate maths uh, you know you, you a year or a year and a half of calculus and and more and more uh, complicated things and then differential equations and then maybe uh, take a linear algebra course and and the reality is, as you find yourself and thousands of other people are finding, uh, it's linear algebra. I mean, linear algebra is actually sort of multivariable calculus, only all the functions are the natural starting point, they're linear functions, ax plus by, and, and the graph is a straight line or a straight plane, everything's flat in linear algebra. Uh, and and comprehensible and 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 computable uh, so right. re really all the nonlinear problems of calculus tend to get linearized you you take a step along the, in, in a straight line and then stop somewhere and, and start over again if you're doing nonlinear problems in linear problems you get there the first go so it's it's just a beautiful and 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 totally understandable subject, yeah, yeah. It's not nothing uh, uh, com super complicated about it, yeah. And and would it be right, like in in the way you're kind of describing it, there, it seems like um, you're talking about it maybe as like um, a a particular way of talking about the same fundamental problem maybe um maybe calculus is like one kind of language or tool that you can use uh, it, uh, and linear algebra is another way that we can pass or, or is that not that you know i don't want to put words in your mouth uh, sure i'm just trying uh, to yeah often so often one is solving equations so these are linear equations you know like 2x plus 3y equal 5 and x plus y equal 2, that what you learn how to do in school. Uh, but then the reality is that those that you have 10,000 equations with 10,000 unknowns in, in engineering and to, to model something properly. Uh, so it's, uh, you really have to, you, you can't just uh, barge in on 10,000 equations. You have to think first and do it in a sensible way yeah and then and then all the tools uh, d develop um yeah so so my new book is called linear algebra for everyone because i right. thought of a new way to to start the course uh yeah, most most classes are using that book that you showed me uh, the, the introduction to linear algebra. But anyway, the, the new one starts in a different way and I'm happy about it. Uh, yeah, so yeah, it's just, uh, it's a combination of applications and, 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 and algebra and, and definitely theory, definitely abstract. I, you know, if a student asks me what's a vector, I don't have any deep answer to that. To me, a vector is like a string of numbers, and uh, and you can add two vectors, and you can multiply by six, and uh, you, you can visualize. You sort of well, you, can you visualize in ten dimensions or something? I mean, ten is a small, <laughs> yeah, ten is a small vector, but but ten is to, to do it. To actually see something, uh, well, I can't. I'm not very geometric. But anyway, maybe that's why I do linear algebra. Because as I said, everything is flat. You're you're dealing with planes and straight lines, and that you can sort of pretend to understand. Sort of one ten-dimensional plane intersecting another ten-dimensional plane, probably 
the meeting would be a nine-dimensional uh, surface. I don't know what it is, a surface. Just the way two lines meet at a point or two ordinary planes meet in a line. Well, just move that dimension up. Yeah, I, th I think this was this is one of the interesting things, um, and you talk about this early on in the lectures when you're kind of drawing, um, say, you've got like a two-dimensional vector, and you're like, well, they meet at this point, and then yeah. um, you go to three dimensions, you like the planes meet, but but really, I what you know, like as you start going beyond there, right? I just can't even conceptualize. I can do the arithmetic, but I can't. Yeah. Um, I, I can do, you know, I can follow an algorithm almost to get the solution, but I don't really sure. understand what, I can't see what's happening. Do you, yeah. do you develop like an intuition over time? I don't something? know if I do. <laughs> I just, probably, I, I just take it as, as true by now. Uh, right. So, uh, yeah, so I'm not, I don't get deeply into foundations probably as some uh, might. Uh, I'm interested in being able to solve problems. Uh, so yeah, I, I guess that you know, mathematicians. There's a whole spectrum from from very very pure, very abstract, to uh, to totally uh, bound to to real to physics or mechanical engineering. And I'm somewhere between, of course. Uh, yeah. So yeah, yeah but I. I try to so so uh, with linear algebra there's certain major ideas and that's the, uh, to deal with a matrix. Uh, actually, what's coming now more and more in applications is a three-way array. So a matrix is a two-way array, just you know a square or a rectangle of numbers. Uh, but but when you get to a cube or a of numbers, uh, tensors, uh, then things become more difficult. No question. Right. Yeah. Yeah, because I, th I think um, perhaps initially coming to like, you know, the, the way that um, the basic operations on, on matrices work and things is like you, you learn the initial rules and then you start developing some understanding of why those rules are happening. You know, why are you going across and up? Um, yeah. and that, but then in three dimensions, there's going to be that extra kind of layer to it, That's right? right. Yeah. To, yeah. To, to click and join. Yeah. Well, even just uh, to multiply two matrices. Uh, so most people learn a rule, a way to do it. Uh, um, but it's not the most uh, effective way. I, I, I mean, it's so what what everybody learns is the is I admit I would do the computation that way, but I don't do the understanding that that with that that multiplication method. I other other ways are better for understanding. Uh, uh, so what, what what would you say those those ways sort of are the, the best way of kind of thinking about um, well, how these uh, yeah, so the regular way, if you want to multiply a matrix A times a matrix B, you you look at a row of A and a column of B, and you work just with that row and that column give you one number called the dot product. That's one number in the answer. Right. So then you do it again and do it again. You eventually fill out the whole answer, the whole matrix uh, a times B, you, you figure out what that matrix C is. But that's not the way to see it. Uh, it's much better to see it by, see it with vectors that rather than just um, seeing a, a single numbers pop out. Um, well, yeah, so I, I don't want to jump into the whole subject, but there, there, are about, there are four important ways to multiply a matrix, and it's good to know all four. I'll just stop, stop with that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, th I think there's there's obviously like a, a mixed bag in my audience of, you know, some people who um, do like physics, uh, engineering right. and computer science sort of professionally um, and some people sure. who are just interested in ideas in general. So uh, how, how did um, you reach the audience or how did you get, get going? You, was, you well, for me, people find you. 
Yeah, kind kind of. It's 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 a bit of a, a mixed kind of bag. So I um, tend to have uh, I do like a combination of things where I'll do interviews like this with individuals around a specific topic, yeah. and then I'll also do like open conversations where then people from the audience just come in and we'll talk about whatever um, oh, nice. from various sort of worldviews and things. And um, generally, it, I mean, I mean, it really it it really varies. There's a lot of um, obviously like. Um, politics religion and that sort of thing that people want to you know like the the I general see. things that okay. you can't talk yeah. about around the dinner table yeah. those sort of things right yeah yeah um and that but then in terms of having um guests on i i'm always trying to draw on um the widest variety of thinkers that i can but also not have people on who just agree with things I already think as well. And that's always a difficulty for me is like, yeah. I, you know, how can I get the best out of it? I, I don't, you know, like in this case, I think linear algebra is a pretty neutral subject, but I'm always like, how, how do I, um, you know, if I'm going to bring a philosopher on who thinks something that I don't think is true, how can I um, get them to articulate their position as best I can? So I yeah, can, uh, I see. right. Uh, right. Uh, and th so that's kind of what I, what I do on my channel, but yeah, it's just, it's just kind of, um, that's, that's uh, the good. audience has just slowly grown from there really. And do you have any idea what the audience is like for typical, uh, interview or a typical, um, I tend to get about, um, somewhere in between like 700 to, you know, 2000 views seems to be the sort of, um, yeah, viewership at the moment. Um, right. But, and, but it's um, been growing over the past year slowly from, it was about uh, maybe like a hundred this time last year. And then I see. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh huh. Yeah. Good. And, and do you have uh, often there, uh, often people outside the UK or, or yeah yeah quite quite often so um for example um someone who I've been doing a series with is in Australia and he's um a physics student who's just finishing a degree in neuroscience yeah um and then like there's quite a lot of American philosophers um who I've had on as well so I'm always sort of messing up the time zones and things, trying to get I people see. on. Okay. <laughs> right. Well, some big news came out of London uh, this week about, so my uh, secondary subject that I know a little about is uh, uh, neural networks and uh, right. um, um, deep learning is a description of it. Uh, 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 one, one piece of artificial intelligence, machine learning. Uh, so the best team I know is in London called Deep Mind. Uh, right. Work for Google or maybe maybe some Alphabet company is at the, behind. But uh, so they announced this week that they had. Uh, so they they're the ones who did AlphaGo. We learned to play Go and play chess. The best of anybody in the world, and you know. Right. Be, Beat all it could beat anybody else a thousand to zero, yeah. Uh, so then now more recently they one team there has got involved with protein folding. It's a protein. very very difficult problem. How if you have a protein so you know sort of the facts about each atom and it tugs on other atoms, and then if it's in three D, it somehow folds into a into a shape that's critical to understand if you like like the virus uh so anyway that that's that's such a difficult problem but now using deep learning uh they've announced some real success with uh it'll be called uh uh so fold alpha fold so out that word alpha is in their company name and so this is alpha folding uh the the new code so it's it's a uh, real going to be a real tool for drug drug development um and, and could you talk drug like development sorry, was sorry. Just hit or miss i think for a, for a long time yeah it, it, could you talk about how that fits in the picture then of sort of mathematical progress and this kind of problem of um np uh, you know does p equal np um problem sets and, and algorithms yeah. and things like that i see okay yeah uh well, so these are sort of concrete problems, but extremely difficult and and very highly nonlinear. Uh, you, if you 
move uh, an atom, you know, if you, so, so atoms or, or, or nature trend, tend is looking for an equilibrium, uh, usually a minimum energy uh, arrangement. So the question is, what is this minimum energy arrangement and, and how does the, how does the mo molecule find its way there? And uh, what right. shape is it? Uh, yeah. So, yeah, so it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, and I'm, oh, I'm not in the field at all. Uh, right. Just, just a reader of the, an admirer of the team that uh, had finally had some real success with, with uh, that particular protein folding problem. Yeah. Yeah, there are a lot of nonlinear problems that are, you know, nature, as we said, acts to minimize energy. So you have a principle, but then you have to do a big computation. And, and with a big molecule, you've got all kinds of degrees of freedom. And which shape does the darn thing take? Yeah. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah. So that is not linear algebra. Linear yeah. algebra, as we said, is always pleasant shapes. Yeah. But it's good. Yeah. And there were, I, I don't know, can you, can you see the chat at the side, by the way, um, while we're talking? I don't oh, know if you can see. Oh, I can, people. yes. A little, uh, right. I don't, I just see so, myself, I guess. And, Oh, okay. Oh, is it? So there were there was some people who someone asked a question earlier, which I thought was quite interesting. Um, okay. Which was how has um, oh. your teaching math changed some uh, changed anything about your personal belief system? Gosh, no, I'm not too sure. I have a personal belief system. Um, you know, I mean, I, my life is just like do your best uh, and uh, and hoping for sort of good fortune and people friendly and I, I i think that's a really nice part of uh academic life well i read that academic life can be very competitive well it's certainly competitive but, right. but very nastily competitive and that i don't see uh right. really uh, uh all the mathematicians that i work with you know they're we're all trying to do you know, solve new problems, harder problems, and uh, anybody who has success is 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 praised for it and encouraged to keep going. Uh, yeah, that's that's really that's a nice part of part of this do you, life. Do you think that that um, you know, like for for maybe for like advice for people learning from your experience, is that something that? you've had to work on like cultivating in the people that you're around in some sense and yourself, or is it um, look to a degree, um, you know, the environment you're placed in? Um, yeah, I think it's whether... probably luck. Uh, yeah, I, I, maybe mathematicians tend to be, uh, you know, we're, we're not super aggressive. <laughs> I mean, to, to get anywhere means you have to go and think about it for a long time. And right. uh, so, uh, and and you're happy to share ideas and meet others who've been successful. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, right. You know, it's it's not not like Wall Street or whatever, yeah. uh, where it's uh, uh, all a competition. Yeah. yeah. There's some competition, but. Uh, but it's well mixed with cooperation and, and yeah and uh, yeah sharing with well, because i think um so like my uh, girlfriend's just finished an undergraduate degree in maths and oh, um, yeah. uh, but one of the things she says you know like about um gh hardy's um mathematicians yeah. apology for example she's right. she's not like a fan of that because no she when she read it she was saying you know it's almost like this um you know you've got to be a, a genius and get all your work done by the age of 29 otherwise you know it's all it's all pointless after that point and there's yeah. these product you're either a protege or you're not and there's no yeah. you know if you just enjoy it then there's uh, do you have any you know because it seems like with what you're doing with linear algebra it's like well hit you know this is for everyone this is more accessible yeah uh, and obviously like you know it's not it's not just uh, going to be easy and it just comes to you but it, do you have 
opinions about about that type of thinking in within Manus. yeah I, I don't agree with Hardy or I don't yeah that's not my I mean I'm I'm well there was a, there was an interesting movie with Hardy and Ramanujan uh, I've forgotten the name of the film but uh, uh, yeah but but certainly um, I, I think more and more uh, I mean it doesn't hurt to be young of course uh, yeah. and uh, full of energy but uh, it's I don't think it's uh, quite as hardy thought about it in those days and and he himself was probably a counter example anyway he kept he was a brilliant and kept uh, doing great work uh, right um, yeah I so yeah, when when I look around, I see uh, you know mathematicians everywhere of, of, of really all ages. Uh, uh, so it's not not uh, I, I I don't think it's a I don't think you're finished at twenty five. Because because I think um, as a, what you some of what you were saying about. Um, as well like that there's this nice atmosphere and culture where you're at but i think in some yeah. places it can be kind of like you know you're either that protege and you get the special attention or whatever right. or you're not the protege and you don't yeah. you know it's and it's yeah. it's like uh that well there's no point now and <laughs> well well let's look on the at the good ones so it, 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 it's certainly true that you 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 get some people coming along who are just sensational yeah. you know they just of course they just see things deeply and yeah. and and to me that's just wonderful i mean i like let's okay let's let's yeah let's uh stay with that and, and uh make it as as great as it can be uh, yeah but but there's a, a lot uh, and maybe applied math is a little more uh uh, a little more generous that you you get longer to to contribute. I think I think so, perhaps. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, but everybody's trying. I think that's the yeah point. yeah yeah. Um, what I, I, I realize I've also um, gone a little bit off of the que the questions that I had written out for you that's all right. beforehand. Yeah. So um, just having a look at those and, and some of the topics that we have um, covered so far. Um, and one of the questions was, so so obviously we, we talked about the um, protein folding uh, in the news recently, but what do you have any general thoughts about the future of computation and uh, mathematics? Like, do you see um, big conceptual changes in how people are thinking about these things in your kind of universe that yeah. are bridging over into the way that people think about i don't know computer architecture at the hardware level maybe or software yeah. design or well well certainly i, I, I deep learning uh, that I'm, I'm using that expression for this uh, structure that's that's grown up uh so uh, you know artificial intelligence of course was has been thought about and 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 worked on now for for two two or three three generations maybe but it looked kind of stuck. It wasn't getting really moving on to being able to solve hard problems uh, for a while. And then an, I, people had an idea uh, of another way to create the the the, path, the flow of information, and it uh, took off. And now it's as as I mentioned, the protein folding problem is one instance of a very recent, very important uh, success. Uh, but it, it, it's, it's really new mathematics created by uh, computer scientists more than mathematicians. Yeah, right. mathematicians are really not central in the, uh, uh, but there are, there are mathematical questions uh, to, to, to answer. I mean, the, 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 the real question is why does it work so well? Right, uh, and uh, and and maybe I should say what's the general idea? Uh, how does it learn to play chess, for example, or how does it learn to translate to German? Well, at the beginning, you might think you have to better to tell it all the 
all that uh, everything that chess masters know or tell it all the rules of language of all the all the grammatical rules of german not true it's much better off to just like if you want to teach somebody a game play the game with them uh don't don't mess around right that's interesting about the rules just start and that's maybe the fundamental principle here P play the game play play go or play chess a million times if you're a computer that's quite possible and you get it you get the idea without somebody else saying well human beings figured out this ending uh, right uh, uh, was successful but the, the computer will learn a new ending that's even better yeah that's a, that's very interesting especially off the back of like um you know when you look at um the more intelligent mammals, for example, in their development, and it seems to be yeah. like how play plays a role in in some of those that's kind right. of higher order that, functions. That's true. It is. It is. That's how. That's how we learn. We learn from from doing and seeing the consequences. Uh, and the computer, of course, just does that super fast. Um, yeah. Um, and then and then we begin to understand what you know what are what are what are the underlying principles what's what's actually going on uh begin to so for example uh in taking deep learning as another example it, it was assumed uh because in, in statistics generally um sort of overfitting the data was a big issue uh that's something that statisticians have learned to try to avoid if they try to get every bit of data, every little wiggle uh, into their system, it sort of overflows and and turns turns back on them. Uh, so it was assumed that you wouldn't try to get uh, to fit fit the data carefully. But then it's turned out that you can over you can go way beyond that with with uh, computers and these are of course the fastest computers so that you can you can have a lot more variables than equations that's unusual usually usually you got a lot of equations a lot of data and you're fitting it with a few a few uh, uh, numbers but in this world in the world of deep learning you've got a lot of parameters a lot of a lot of freedom to choose and you can fit enormous data. Anyway, uh, we're beginning to understand why this big surprise is actually explainable and 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 correct. That that when you have super many parameters, super many constants that you can choose, uh, then you can really fit the data and and still get a stable, successful. Output and, and for people who are wondering, I suppose, you know, where do where does like learning something like linear algebra, where where does like um, sort of sharpening your skill set on these tools play into that? You know, is it is it that we um, have to use those tools to model the machinery that we see in like um, biological neural networks, so we can replicate that in computers somehow to do it to achieve some certain end or what? You know, yeah, how, 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 how is it? Often the goal is is to try to see what happens, and I mean, that, I suppose that's the fundamental belief of every scientist that that there is a pattern, that there is a there is that it is possible to understand uh, how the thing how the thing works, uh, like your brain. I mean, that's a giant problem that we're not close to solving, but mm. it will will make a little headway. And a little headway, and then, then somebody has a deep idea about, oh, maybe it's organized in this way. Yeah, we, we just don't know, really. Uh, I mean, that's a, probably the outstanding problem for the twenty first century is under neuro neuroscience. I'd I'd like to go into neuroscience if I if I was starting again. Um, well, I've just been given an offer for um, a master's in computational neuroscience that I'm yeah. too scared too scared to accept yet, though. Because I see. Uh, okay, <laughs> well, you're, you're an open. Your guy is open to 
ideas and so on. It, it, it sounds good. Yeah, yeah. You, you, because it's probably partly inside and partly a guess, and then you try it. And does it fit? Does it fit the what we observe? Uh, yeah, so that's uh, uh, that's a, that's a neat subject. One one of not the only neat subject, but it is one. Yeah, yeah. And, and how how do you see? Um, you know, why why is um, the sort of mathematician's role so important though in this universe? You know, of, of figuring of answering questions like this, of building these kind of. Uh, yeah, somehow that's what a mathematician does: is kind of build a structure, which kind of try looks tries to look deeply beyond the, uh, beyond the first uh, number or two and see the see the patterns uh, yeah so it's it's uh, I think neuroscience calls for some of the same same uh, qualities but and, and, and more than the mathematicians have you also have to have some sense of what's physically possible what uh, what are the right questions? Uh, that that's of course in science. That's that's the 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 art of finding the right question. Right, is, uh, super important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I read, I read uh, a, an interesting talk by Richard Hamming on that. The why is there yeah. something like why why is there so little progress in in the sciences or something? Or I see. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, he was a, he was a sort of philosopher of mathematics hamming at, at Bell Labs um, uh, and and uh, so there's still some mathematicians who who, who see a, a way to communicate their ideas very broadly uh, most of us are you know are, are Teaching a uh, teaching a course that's that's explicitly mathematics, uh, maybe very abstract, maybe not. Um, yeah. Uh, so it's there's something for everybody. That's really the the truth. Yeah. So, so there were there were a few questions that I got from the audience uh, beforehand. Sure. Um, so one of them was, "What's your favorite matrix decomposition and why?" <laughs> well, so my favorite is the one I've thought about the last few months, which I, so it's, uh, it's, um, I call it the column row decomposition. So you have a, any matrix and, and you write it as a, uh, you, you write it as a product of two matrices, C, R. So C standing for a column and R for a row. And, uh, yeah, so that's, I, I, I feel that's, uh, there's only so far you can get, then further ideas, eigenvalues of the matrix, singular values of the matrix, that, those go deeper. Uh, that, that comes later in the subject. I'm, I was looking for how to begin, you know, the first week or two, how do you get somebody to play with matrices, to look at three or four vectors and say, yeah, those vectors will lie on a plane. Uh, just just practice with the things. So anyway, that's my favorite for now is to is to teach teach professors who have to get the idea first that that this is really a good way to present the subject to get started is to is this particular the column times row. Uh, let me let me give a a website. So the website for the new book would be math.mit.edu/slash everyone. So that would that would you tell you a little bit about this um, particular decomposition that I'm excited about. A, a equal uh, any matrix A equals C times R. Yeah. Yeah, I then, just put then the link or the people the famous ones, eigenvalues and singular values. Singular values super important. Yeah. And is is that does that happen to be the matrix in because I, I could only make out a tiny little picture on your uh, email, but it seems like you've got a matrix of cupcakes in the Ah yes, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. On my birthday a couple of years ago, uh, the class or some 
nice person in the class brought in a lot of cupcakes for everyone and and the icing or the frosting on the cupcakes spelled out my uh, uh, a, a favorite matrix that's right yeah yeah it's, uh, uh, but i keep the matrix itself secret for tonight and so the the next question then that someone asked in advance was uh um and I, are, are the four fundamental subspaces of a matrix the most important concept in an introductory linear algebra course, or would you pick something else? Oh, well, uh, yeah, that, uh, I'm really happy, proud, proud to say that, the, well, of course, the four, those four subspaces are known uh, to, to, uh, every, to everybody in algebra for, a long time, but somehow to make and bring them into the basic linear algebra course that I'm, I'm sort of happy to have done that. So they are a fundamental idea of understanding how a matrix works. Uh, the, again, it's the columns and the rows. Those are those produce two of the subspaces, and then there are two more. Um, yeah, it's. I, I, I just think it's an idea that, that, that professors and teachers and students have found that they get the idea it, and it, it really throws a little light on the big picture of, of, uh, of uh, these matrices in, in, in 10 dimensions. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm sort of feel good about the four fundamental subspaces. Um, so then the next question, um, if yeah. advanced aliens arrived at Earth after crossing interstellar space, how much of humans' current understanding of linear algebra would you expect them to have in common? Ah, well, if they, if they had, if it was a civilization like ours sort of doing math, I guess I think that they probably would have come up with the same ideas or, or many of the same ideas, but this, this is not a... Obviously, I have no special knowledge, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I think if you thought about matrices, then these ideas would come, eigenvalues would show up, uh, and then singular values and so on. It's a it's sort of natural evolution of ideas. Uh, always, always, ideas have to, they, they get, they get, they grow, and they get strong by solving problems, by 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 contributing to to understanding what's going on. Uh, uh, other ideas come up; they're sort of okay, yep, they're interesting, but they didn't lead anywhere, so they drift drift out of out of sight. So, yeah. are there are there any parts of linear algebra that you think? Uh, um, what sort of, uh, I mean, like, like I'm getting a sense as you're talking that you're saying like, there's, there's almost, um, I, I don't want to pin a pigeonhole you in a position, but like, a sort of like, um, almost sure. plat Platonist type, uh, you know, like, like some of these th objects are real and there's descriptions of them. Um, are there any parts of linear algebra, which seem more, more just conventional fictional to you and, or probably. You know, the well, aliens wouldn't have them. <laughs> yeah, I never thought of myself as a Platonist, uh, or, or not only myself, but yeah, you know, <laughs> a too. yeah. Uh, but, but maybe that's right. Yeah, somehow, uh, yeah, ideas that work and that and that and that allow you to to solve uh, new problems. Those are the ones that survive. Uh, other ideas may be equally true. But they don't lead yeah. anywhere, right? Uh, yeah, and uh, and uh, yeah. So I, I used the example of deep learning in order to show something, show an idea that developed and developed out, sort of really out. It's not a, it's not a mathematician's idea, but it's solving a problem that a mathematician can recognize, and right. so very successfully. Uh, yeah, so I, I guess that's right. Some some ideas have have uh, get get a foothold and, and lead you somewhere. Well, I'm sure that'd be true in neuroscience. You might have an idea about how the brain is organized, and it looked good and seemed good, but then 
some experiment shows that uh, yeah. doesn't doesn't give the right picture. Yeah. And um, someone asked it in in the um, chat, a uh, super chat for five dollars. So thank you, Rob. Um, and he said, um, "Do you have views on Norman J. Wildberger? I think he's over at University of New South Wales." Uh, yeah, rational I, I had some email correspondence with uh, year, some years ago with him with Wildberger. I but I didn't get into his. Uh, Rational trigonometry. Special thing. Yeah, solid geometries. It doesn't sound like my thing. But it, it oh, is that a picture anyway? Whatever. Yeah, um, uh, yeah I, it, 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 he's probably got a good good idea going there. Uh, I, I'm not a, able to say yes or no. Yeah. So therefore, he gets the benefit of the doubt. Uh, yeah, it's... Uh, I, there are definitely uh, more ideas are still out there waiting to be to be uh, recognized. Yeah. So then there, there was w one more question so the, that the came way, in. Uh, oh, if, sorry. If, if you wanted to know a star, well, maybe people do know who are in, in So Terry Tao, T-A-O, who grew up in Australia. Uh, uh, and then, uh, so he's, he deservedly won all all kinds of prizes. So he's he's a, he's a fantastic problem solver. If he can learn a whole new subject that 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 uh, has been developed over a long time, and he gets it and he uses it, it's it's quite remarkable. Yeah, yeah. So I would, and he has a blog. So I would Terry Tao T A O. I would. Uh, if you want to see a real mathematician, uh, uh, he's the real thing. Right. Yeah, I might I might uh, reach out to him and see if he'd be interested in coming on. Oh, yeah, right absolutely. He, he teaches in L.A., in Los Angeles. Right. Now. Yeah. Because there's, um, I don't know if you, you might not have come across her, but the, um, a lady called Vicki Neal in, in Oxford. Sure. Um, She's at Balliol College. So and right. it happened to be the one I stumbled into. Yeah, so I, I only know her from lunch conversations yeah. and so on. Yeah. Well, I, I only know her from a little book on prime numbers that she wrote, and yeah. uh, she talks oh, about right. some, some of Terry uh, Terry Tao's uh, I see. Yeah. thing work that he's done in that. So, yeah. so Yeah, well, she keeps getting prizes for her teaching and right. so on. So I think that's she's, she's a good person to, to have, yeah. Um, so the, the last uh, question then that I got from the audience in advance was, um, are you aware of the recent discovery of a method to compute the eigenvectors of a square her Hermitian matrix? I've not yes. really heard that word. Well, before. Um, it's, a, it's a symmetric matrix, you could say. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. F from the eigenvectors of its minors. Uh, do you yeah. think this will make it into the introductory linear algebra textbooks? Oh, uh, well, uh, let's see. So I am aware of it. Uh, it couldn't be in linear algebra, and actually, I and actually Terry Tao has contributed, and he, he just has a has such a um, broad scope. He, he the, I think the original idea is not his, but he saw how to place it in ma within mathematics and how to express it. So his blog would would get you to that. To that right. particular subject, I, I, I don't imagine myself that it's going to make us sh shake the world, but but we were all sort of surprised that there was this connection uh, that that was unknown when the topics themselves are are familiar to to everybody in the in the field. Yeah, so it's yeah, it, it's a great thing. Yeah, things new things appear. And and other and and things become more important than the determinants. Maybe are less important, but then determinants are still a amazing uh, have amazing properties. So so they're probably they'll always uh, be in the picture. Yeah. And then um, someone's just asked, um, do you have any recommendations oh. for learning group theory? Um, he did a course I a few years that. back. No. And yeah. So that. That's in the heading of what I would call abstract algebra. That that's the broader field of algebra, and linear algebra is a, a narrower 
part of it. Who? I don't know. I think you just do examples. If you, if you, uh, you know, try to get so a group is a is a bunch of uh, elements that have you can multiply them, and uh, they follow certain rules. Uh, so um, yeah, there, there, there's a lot you can say about a group. Uh, it, it's a it's a little more subtle com, com, uh, concept than. Uh, than a vector space. Vector spaces are pretty clear, like 3D, three-dimensional space. We live there, we, we X, Y, Z, we know how to draw pictures in, in where a group is, it enters a lot into chemistry, theoretical chemistry and many other, and, and physics. Yeah, I think you just keep going with it. Just go back to it, go back to it. And, uh, and uh, get, get there, yeah. Good luck on that. Right. <laughs> and do, do you have like a jet? Because you've obviously covered a, a ton of maths in your lifetime. Um, like, how um, do you generally go about like approaching learning? Do you just sit down with questions in a textbook, sort of keep going through? Yeah, do examples, the... examples, examples. Yeah, that's right. Until we can see how the how an example works. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. so um, Oh, sorry. You, you. Well, you was, I just think something. we may be near. Yeah, I was going to the right time to let uh, let everybody fi finish. But it's a pleasure to, to talk. Yeah. yeah. No, I really appreciate that. Um, you know, you you came on on the off the back of a sort of random email in your inbox uh, asking oh, as well. So sure. 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 Well, that's yeah. great. Yeah. Great. Well, yeah, I, I think you're doing it. good things. So, who do you have any other? plans now for interviews um, um it currently lined up um not that many um because it's it's kind of coming up to christmas and a lot of people are really yes. quite busy and stuff and um, there's right. a philosopher and neuroscientist called patricia churchland who um should be coming on at some point but um i think she's just really busy over christmas yes. at the minute um, right and then I'm trying to think who I, I wanted to have on. Um, do, you, do you know a guy called Graham Priest at all? No. Um, what does he's, he more, he's more in the philosophy world, but he's yes, worked on like um, the grounding of like um, different l l um, logical languages. I and see. He, yeah. he, so he's worked on um, something called like dialetheisms, which is this idea where like, you know, the, the law of non-contradiction sort of isn't a thing in these particular la um, languages. Oh yeah. And he, so I wanted, to, I'm trying to set up a discussion between him and um, another um, philosopher and logician called Robert Coons, who's I a see. Thomist. So he take, he, he's okay. actually, yeah. uh, so I thought this could be like a really interesting conversation between that, that would be um, good. Two, right. two very different sort of yeah. thinking, thinking yeah. people. But. Yeah. Yeah, philosophers are uh, highly interesting people, and they and they have different different points of view that they're willing to argue. So, yeah. Well, good luck on the whole uh, whole project. That that's really neat. Neat. Yeah. Thanks. I really. Yeah. I really appreciate you coming sure. on and talking. Sure. My pleasure. And I'll say good night to all the audience. Uh, yeah. Too. <laughs> right. <laughs>